Hello, my name is Ashish Padani. I'm responsible for cloud platforms at Red Hat, and more specifically, I've been responsible for OpenShift since pretty much its earliest days. So welcome to OpenShift Commons. Thank you for attending virtually. And I'm really excited to be here in front of you, uh, at least virtually presenting uh, on just some of what we've been up to uh, with OpenShift, with Red Hat's larger cloud strategy, as well as help us look forward a little bit to where we hope to go. So let's start first with uh, what we truly believe is Red Hat's mission. It has been Red Hat's mission from its earliest days. Uh, open unlocks the world's potential, right? We fundamentally believe in open source uh, for over 20 years. Uh, as a company, Red Hat's uh, invested in open source communities and making sure that we are able to deliver and support uh, project technologies based on open source uh, and then ensure uh, that our customers are successful with it. Uh, and so when we talk about open first, we also want to make sure that we put the user at the center of everything we do, right? Make sure that they have a primary user experience uh, that allows for them to be productive from all the tasks that they are trying to accomplish using these open source technologies. Uh, and to be really good at ensuring that the user comes first, you know, we want to also, uh, make sure that we are able to provide the value of operating those technologies directly to our customers. Uh, and so this collaboration that, you know, we want to kick off really is about the operational knowledge to use software uh, is becoming as important almost as the code itself. And so all the work that we do to stand up the software, to use it, to operate it, uh, and then pass all of that uh, learning and all of that feedback into uh, our products, into our technology, directly to our users, allows for everyone to be successful. And so you'll see a lot uh, from us with regard to also talking about uh, our operational knowledge, also talking about our investments from an SRE perspective, and then talking about how we can take, take that and put that back directly into the community. Having said all of that, um, what we really focused on, you know, is to give you beyond even just core infrastructure um, is, an, is what we'll call intelligent horizontal platform. What does that mean? Our platform itself runs across various IT footprints, right? From, you know, physical to obviously virtualized, uh, ensuring that we run a bare metal as well as we do uh, for someone uh, deploying on a private cloud, uh, as well as obviously on a public cloud. And then increasingly what we find is these applications, especially in these distributed environments, especially as uh, companies fundamentally embrace distributed systems, is that they're running more and more out to the edge. And well, the edge is an interesting, interesting topic, right? What maybe one company considers, you know, an edge, right? To others seems still fairly close to their core. And, and they might be thinking of edge as you know, just very, very close to the actual user of the technology. But regardless of these definitions of near edge or far edge and, and how different companies think about it, what we want to do is provide you an abstraction that spans bare metal, public cloud, as well as edge in a consistent fashion. And if we're able to do that, which we firmly believe that we're able to do and we can you know, keep investing in that, uh, is to provide you a hybrid cloud, the same user experience, the same uh, lessons that we learned from operating ourselves at scale uh, and, and giving you all of those capabilities. So you as a user, as a customer can find value from it. To do that, we have built an entire portfolio of technology across um, a, a collection of uh, products, uh, open source communities, uh, that we work with it, you know, feedback from users over a period of time. Um, and as we've done that, we've also ensured that we're embracing the new areas that customers are uh, going towards. And that gets us to Kubernetes, which is really at the heart of our platform. What we've done is to say, how can we provide you a container-optimized operating system, taking advantage of all the work that we've done over years with Red Enterprise Linux, um, ensure that we are a first class uh, supporter of Kubernetes, where we are um, CNCF certified with regard to the Kubernetes distribution we provide, and then layer on top additional services that can provide value. Some of those are services directly uh, for the platform, 
others are with regard to actual applications you can run on it, uh, services to make it easier for you as a user to develop on the platform, make it easier for you to consume data from the platform, and then, of course, an entire ecosystem, which is really where OpenShift Commons shines, um, around additional services that a user might need for this platform. And then finally, make sure that we're able to provide you uh, management across multiple cloud uh, deployments that you have. So that entire, if you will, packaging, that entire combination that, that we provide to you as a user is about saying, you know, we're gonna take care of uh, a completely integrated platform all the way from the OS going up, you know, into actual services as well as the management. Having said that, you know, we also wanna make sure that it's flexible, that it's integratable, that we allow for you as a user to take advantage of different services from various partners to be able to deploy this platform uh, across a series of these environments, as we talked about, the, the four footprints that, that you know, we, we established, uh, and now add an edge to that, and then ensure that you can deploy that, run that, and manage that at scale. And then we can do that with you uh, on the biggest public clouds, or we allow for you to do that yourself. That's a lot to take in. Right? Because what we're trying to do is ultimately provide you a platform that's usable and flexible across these environments, but at the same time ensure that to the extent that you need assistance from us to be able to run and deploy that, we're able to provide that for you. Having said all that, you know, what are these different, you know, managed cloud offerings that we do provide you? So, you know, of course we uh, deploy and run and support OpenShift on-premise that a customer can, can manage. Uh, we work closely with partners like uh, Microsoft Azure as well as uh, AWS uh, and IBM to provide a jointly managed and supported uh, OpenShift service uh, that runs on those clouds. And then we also provide uh, an SRE service uh, that we deploy and manage on Google. So any major cloud of your choice, we can provide you a native offering on it. Uh, and of course, we support you to, to run and deploy that uh, yourself also in any of these clouds, as well as directly in your own data center uh, and on bare metal uh, environments. And that fundamentally takes us to the next point, right? Which is that we believe that the industry has fundamentally changed. It's gone from what we'll call proprietary scale-up architectures, right? In the old days, you might call that uh, mainframes, uh, moved that to commodity scale-up architectures, right? So. Um, Java or LAMP stacks would be examples of that. From there to proprietary scale out architectures, right? Like what we run from a grid perspective to more and more increasingly these days on commodity scale out architectures, right? So for example, with the advent of big data or, or uh, NoSQL deployments. Kubernetes itself can run on any of these architectures and in an automated fashion uh, and, and in almost a, a, a a fashion where it learns as you scale, right? So in an almost an autonomous fashion. Uh, and these characteristics um, of Kubernetes, uh, which makes it the heart of our platform, which makes it the basis of these uh, uh, clusters or self-healing clusters that we provide for you, uh, makes us confident to say the cluster is the new computer. It makes us confident to say that, you know, as you operate them uh, and you put greater and greater automation into these platforms, and you run them at greater scale, the learning that we can provide, you know, helps for you to deploy applications uh, and manage them in a better fashion than ever before. And then I'll talk a little bit about the investments that we've made to create greater operation into the platform. One example of that is some of this technology that Red Hat acquired through an acquisition of a company called CoreOS, uh, is to be able to say, how can we provide for you over the air updates? that make it easier for you as a user to be able to consume upgrades to the platform, to be able to ensure that you can upgrade the platform itself. Um, and then as you know, you see uh, new versions come out, as you have new, let's say, security vulnerabilities being released, that you're able to manage them in a much better fashion as you did before. Installation and management of the platform is the feedback that we've got from the over 2,000 customers that deployed the platform at scale over the last five years or so. Uh, is definitely a top priority for us. 
for taking the lessons that we're getting with regard to running applications at scale and then building them back into the platform. And these results that we've got with regard to the lessons that we learned from customers and that we continually keep investing in ensuring uh, our strategy keeps us up um, really has allowed for us to get some great recognition in the marketplace. So you might have seen uh, a recent Forrester report that came out uh, that ranked uh, the Red Hat technology, the OpenShift platform, really as market leading, not just with regard to uh, the strategy that we put in place, but also the execution uh, with regard to the capabilities that we're delivering to, to customers. Uh, and for that, I want to thank uh, all of you, your, our users, uh, our customers, our partners, uh, for you know, giving us this feedback, for uh, giving us, if you will, this kind of support that allows for us not only to be able to serve you, to give you a platform to run your mission critical applications, but also to give us uh, the feedback so that we can continuously keep thinking about, look, what else do we need to add to the platform to make it more and more usable uh, as you deploy and run these uh, uh, platforms at scale. Um, and and the, the reason for the success that we have with regard to uh, our hybrid cloud, really there, there are a few keys to that. Uh, but I wanna kind of walk through, through them uh, a little bit uh, so you have an understanding. Uh, number one is what I'll call uh, our commitment to innovation and our commitment to uh, open source communities uh, and our interest in making sure that we're fostering uh, this collaboration uh, on a global basis. Um, you see us active uh, uh, in a lot of different communities, right? So whether it's, you know, Kubernetes community, whether it's the work we're doing uh, with regard to the operator technology that we're making uh, available uh, to customers large, uh, whether we're participating in other areas, like whether it's, you know, Tecton, Knative, uh, you know, uh, Argo CD, uh, areas that we can provide greater capabilities from a, a developer uh, perspective that we can integrate into the platform. Um, all the work we're doing uh, to be able to say, look, there needs to be uh, the uh, ability to move legacy workloads onto the platform uh, and investing in uh, projects like Kubert uh, to allow for virtual machines to run natively within a distributed environment like Kubernetes uh, in the same way as you would run that uh, VM. Uh, in your uh, traditional environment, uh, in your in your data center, in, in the way you've set up your existing applications. Um, so it's a huge range of projects. It's a huge range of communities that that we invest in, uh, ensuring that we're continually staying at the the highest levels from an innovation perspective. So that's, if you will, one leg of you know our strategy and where we invest. Uh, another area that you know I want to make sure I call out is just the, the number of use cases that, that we're able to uh, participate in with uh, the trust that our customers place in uh, and the insights that we can get from that. So whether it's uh, uh, modernization of existing applications and saying, you know, I want to deploy them uh, as my, uh, you know, in containers as microservices, run them in a cloud native fashion, uh, whether it's uh, thinking about uh, newer workloads, uh, uh, in AI ML, for example, uh, that's extremely popular. Uh, whether it's customers, you know, thinking about, you know, I've got, you know, big data or analytics or uh, new applications that I need to build, how can I take advantage of deploying it and running them at scale? Uh, customers that come to us with regard to wanting to run uh, their platform in a hybrid cloud fashion, so an abstraction that's consistent regardless of where it's deployed and run, any of these different you know, use cases that we help customers with, um, they're all ways for us to learn. And I want to take one example and uh, give you some background on, on, on the sorts of things that we see customers doing. So fairly recently, we had a, a customer financial services company uh, based out in Latin America that wanted uh, and got the license to open a brand new uh, bank in Spain. Uh, and they said, hey, look, we have an opportunity to open up a brand new bank. And of course, today, if someone opens up a new bank, they're likely going to make it digital, right? So this was a digital only, 100% digital um, new bank that they decided to open up. Uh, they named this bank Pi Bank. Um, and the project went from planning and design to production on the OpenShift platform within four months. 
right? So within four months, they went all the way from planning this all digital bank to actually launching a checking account to the public, which is incredible. It is incredible to be able to see, you know, this kind of speed uh, that customers are going through when they think about, I want a cloud native development platform uh, that can be flexible and allow for me to roll out services. They are now putting out new services such as credit cards, mortgages and deposit, uh, new kind of, if you will, uh, deposit capabilities, um, all based on this core platform uh, that they've built out. Uh, but so that's truly, truly phenomenal uh, with regard to, if you will, the speed that customers can move at now. Uh, the feedback that they gave up uh, to us was to tell us that they can roll out updates and new services twice as fast and at half the operating cost uh, in comparison to if they had uh, gone with any other alternatives to be able to, to deploy and, and run this. Uh, so really quite incredible to kind of see that. Uh, and, and of course, they want to you know, deploy and run this in sort of a hybrid cloud to be able to take advantage of public cloud services uh, and, and uh, infrastructure when they can. Uh, and also take advantage of their traditional environment uh, to make the most use of their investment. So really great example, if you will. And there are so many more examples like that uh, of customers doing some remarkable things uh, with the platform. And that, that really is what motivates us uh, to keep uh, investing and growing uh, and supporting our users. Um, and having said that, you know, the key part of, you know, growing and being motivated and supporting our users is really this community collaboration. And that's the reason why I'm excited uh, to come to OpenShift Commons to have a chance to, to talk to all of you uh, because you know, our partners really are at the heart of you know, what we're able to deliver. I mean, we noticed that you know, to the extent that we're focused on ensuring that you know, our customers are successful, uh, we also want them to feel like, look, they're part of a greater community, right? A greater community of users uh, who's collaborating to share best practices you know, talk about what's working, talk about what's not working, right? Failure is important because we learn from our mistakes, right? And then we share with each other to be able to tell each other, hey, this is what didn't work. Maybe, you know, try something else instead or talk to someone else in the community, get the feedback from them with regard to if, you know, they had a challenge, how they overcame it. And so maybe when you see that next in your environment, you know what to do. Maybe learn from some, you know, uh, providers of monitoring service, uh, of a logging service, uh, uh, you know, new database technology that's come up and be able to think about, look, how can I take advantage of that? Uh, but how can I use that uh, within my environment? Uh, and so this ability to sort of provide OpenShift Commons, which, you know, we've uh, as, as a group collectively invested in for so many years to be able to create this sort of ecosystem, if you will, uh, of partnering, of, of, uh, of engagement with each other, uh, it's so important to us and, and why we keep uh, wanting to make sure that it's available to uh, users across our world uh, is because I think we learn best when we're able to talk to each other uh, and be able to share these uh, uh, lessons uh, in a very kind of free uh, in information exchange um, to be able to uh, grow from that. Um, and, and the work that we do in terms of this collaboration really allows for uh, various different services to, to come out. So. I talked earlier about this notion of operators. Um, and, and the simplest way to think about operators is to, to say, um, if I could take uh, a, a piece of, if you will, human intelligence um, and be able to encode that intelligence with regard to how to uh, update and manage a piece of software, an application uh, within a distributed environment and have that uh, environment uh, treat that set of instructions as native to the environment uh, and be able to follow that uh, on a repeated basis, uh, wouldn't that be extremely powerful from an automation and management perspective? What does that mean? Um, that means that, you know, if you've got uh, hundreds, if not thousands of containers that are running at scale and certain of those containers uh, actually carry applications uh, and those applications need to be updated in a certain way, to be life cycled in a certain way, uh, need, for example, to be brought up in a certain way. Uh, if uh, for whatever reason, uh, a pod or a node goes down, uh, then the system is smart enough to be able to have the instructions to be able to, to, to put that in play. Uh, and that's really uh, the, uh, the value of what operator brings uh, with regard to uh, automation management to the platform. Uh, and we're really, really uh, happy to be able to you know, build a large ecosystem 
uh, of uh, users, of our partners, of our customers, we're all building these operators. Uh, and so you've got some examples that you can see, and, and they really span multiple categories, right? Going from databases and, and big data uh, to developer tools to, you know, I talked about AI, ML, and, and workloads becoming extremely popular with customers, uh, as well as uh, areas that you would expect around monitoring and logging and security and so on. Um, so to the extent that you have questions around this, I encourage you uh, to ask people around you within uh, the OpenShift Commons community. Um, there's a wider, you know, uh, operator ecosystem as well. Uh, there's an operator hub that you can take advantage of with regard to what operators are available, uh, as well as many other resources to learn about, you know, what operators are, who's participating in the community, uh, how you can, um, you know, uh, you know, either create your own operator or use operators that are created by others, uh, and how you can go off and really extend your platform uh, and make these applications much more cloud native uh, than they have been in the past. Um, and then we also provide you a way to consume these different uh, services, right? Whether it's uh, operators that come from different partners, as well as additional technologies that we make available to you via the Red Hat Marketplace. Uh, so the Marketplace is, a, a, if you will, a relatively uh, new offering from us. We did this in conjunction with IBM and IBM Invested. Uh, a lot of resources from an engineering perspective, as well as, you know, product capabilities uh, to build out a specific marketplace uh, for OpenShift. Uh, and it can be deployed on any cloud and on-prem, anywhere basically that OpenShift runs. Uh, and gives you access uh, in one place uh, to uh, essentially a large catalog of certified uh, enterprise software, uh, some of which obviously comes from Red Hat and IBM, and a whole lot of it that comes from our partners. Uh, it takes advantage of these operators that we just talked about um, to make it easier to install, deploy, and manage uh, the various different applications. Uh, we provide support for it, you know, and for, for you to use, uh, if you will, the software that's coming from, from our partners. And of course, there's a whole lot you can do with regard to the spend that you have on it and making sure you can uh, optimize uh, you know, what you purchase. So we're quite excited to be able to not only provide the key core technology for operators, for third-party applications uh, to be deployed and run natively uh, in our OpenShift platform, but then also provide you uh, technology like the marketplace to allow for you to be able to consume it. Uh, so I've gone through a lot of topics in relatively short period of time, right? And, and, I, and I thank you for, for uh, paying attention and giving me the opportunity uh, to be able to talk about those things. Let me just speak for a few minutes with regard to, you know, where we want to kind of, you know, go from here and really what drives us. You know, at, at the beginning, I just started off by talking about open hybrid cloud. And, and really, you know, this might sound like just a few, you know, catchphrases or words, uh, but for us, it's more than that, right? It's, it's, it's a philosophy to us. Uh, and by that, what I mean is, you know, we firmly believe in open and open source. I started off uh, this conversation uh, talking about that. Uh, but then we also firmly believe in this notion of choice, choice with regard to deploying your applications, your platform in any infrastructure uh, that's appropriate for you. And you will have different reasons, right? You might have reasons with regard to data locality, uh, compliance, uh, some kind of government regulations, uh, privacy, uh, any number of reasons for you to say certain applications, you know, will run on data centers, environments that are in a certain, you know, a country, a geograph you know, geography, a jurisdiction uh, of some sort. Uh, and others that you will say, look, I can, you know, take advantage of a public cloud or a third party offering uh, and deploy them anywhere I want. Um, in certain cases, right, your focus might be on saying, how can I directly run on bare metal, right? Make sure I take out the tax with regard to uh, overhead, if you will, even from, from a virtualization perspective and run this uh, container platform to give me a greater amount of efficiency uh, directly on, on bare metal servers. Uh, certain other cases, you might say, look, I want to deploy and run this uh, application set directly uh, on new environments, such as uh, NVIDIA-based GPU. Um, and with OpenShift, we help support all of those choices. Uh, NVIDIA is a great example. We've been partnering uh, closely with them to ensure 
that the OpenShift platform is supported uh, to be deployed in an NVIDIA environment. We have customers already taking advantage of that. Volkswagen is a great example uh, of someone that's been doing a whole bunch of its uh, autonomous uh, driving, uh, machine learning simulations, uh, you know, in containerized fashion uh, on the OpenShift platform uh, running off of uh, uh, NVIDIA hardware. Uh, but so, you know, lots of choices with regard to uh, deployments that you can have from a cloud perspective, uh, from a platform that you choose, uh, as well as obviously hardware choices. We also want to ensure that we are supporting you into uh, new application areas. Right? I talked a little bit about uh, the interest in AIML. Uh, Edge is becoming increasingly an area of interest. You see us making investments with our new uh, product releases. Uh, on the edge front, both with OpenShift, but also with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, you know, uh, we announced support for uh, three node clusters. You expect for us to keep investing uh, in those uh, areas uh, going forward. Um, and it's it's true for essentially our entire portfolio uh, that we want to make sure, you know, whether it's our OpenStack technologies, whether it's our management technologies, uh, helping support customers who want to increasingly run more and more out into the edge. So. Uh, expect for us to uh, keep expanding from an application perspective uh, to also widen our footprint. Uh, we want to make sure we're giving you a cloud-like experience as well, right? So when you are deploying and running these services, in the cases where you choose to say, uh, manage this for me, Red Hat, or manage this for me, you know, in conjunction with a cloud provider, uh, give this to me as a first party service. We want to make sure we do that as well. So whether it's Azure Red Hat OpenShift service, whether it's OpenShift service on Amazon or the one on IBM cloud or any of the other clouds, um, that experience that you will have of being able to consume OpenShift is just like any public cloud service. And then you'll see the rest of our portfolio also being made available uh, in the cloud. So whether it's our middleware, it's our uh, new next generation, modernization of Java uh, called Quarkus, which I highly encourage for you to check out, right? This is a, a community that, that you can definitely engage in uh, to think about modernizing Java applications. Um, you know, take advantage of running that on OpenShift as a service, our API management technologies, uh, 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 Kafka uh, to provide you streaming capabilities, um, our storage uh, software also made available as a service. So, uh, essentially, our entire portfolio is made available to you as a service uh, to provide you as much a cloud native experience as possible. So whether we're talking about this uh, support on multiple different clouds, on the hardware that you're deploying on, uh, whether you're deploying it on bare metal, uh, new application frameworks you can take advantage of, uh, or deploying out directly into the edge, regardless of whether you're a telco, uh, customer user, or if you're an enterprise, um, all of it in a cloud-like fashion um, is really what our vision is for the hybrid cloud. We want to make sure that we're able to provide you that abstraction um, across any choice that, that you make um, as, as a customer. So with that, uh, I think I'm out of time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for taking uh, uh, some of your valuable time to listen to me, uh, for listening to you know what we've been working on. Uh, we are truly very proud of, uh, you know, what we've built so far with your support. Um, and we hope to keep being able to engage with you uh, as an ecosystem uh, in open fashion to collaborate with you, uh, to encourage for you to take part in commons, uh, both to learn from others, but also give back. Because the only way we become stronger uh, is when we participate, when we share, uh, and we are much more open. Uh, because we believe that that's the most beneficial for all of us going forward.